Now we're ready to streak the plate. We have two plates here. I've wrapped in parafilm just to keep them um, from, from uh, being contaminated. We've got my alcohol lamp, which is a nice cheap little lamp with a wick, and you could purchase denatured alcohol to fill it, or if you're lucky enough to live in a state that has uh, grain alcohol uh, legally able to be purchased, it works fine, and that's what we've got here. This is my nichrome loop. This is just a loop. You can get uh, plastic varieties of these. Um, this one is reusable, so it's nice. A marker. You want to you want to keep track of dates and and strains when you streak the plate so that you don't uh, forget what you've got. A lighter to light the uh, the torch, and then these are yeast. Uh, these are slants. This I actually obtained during a, a yeast swap uh, from uh, fellow brewers on the uh, brew forums. And so I want to take a culture of this and streak it out on a plate so that I can use that um, to grab individual colonies rather than pulling it straight from here. This way I can ensure the sample is, is uh, uniform and, uh, and uh, not contaminated. All right, well, let's get to streaking. The idea of having a flame is to create an updraft. Bacteria don't have wings, they can't fly. They travel on dust particles. And so as long as you have an updraft, the dust particles won't settle down. So that if you work um, near the flame and leaving everything upside down until you're ready to use it and only turn it right side up, for a short period of time you minimize the risk of contamination. And so that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to uh, take my first plate, which is upside down, the auger is on the top side. I'm going to draw a line because I want to use one plate to streak two different colonies of yeast just to save on um, plate space. I'm going to draw a line down the middle. And so I'm only going to streak one half of this plate. So what I want to do you want to sort of get everything in place before you open up and, and risk contamination. So what I want to do is I'm going to crack that just a little so that it's easy to get off. I'm actually going to hold the top with my hand like this, with my finger, while I hold the loop. And so I want to make sure I have everything exactly where I want it. This is going to stay right here because this hand will, will pick up the, uh, the plate. So first we want to sterilize the loop. So you put it in the flame, and you leave it in the flame until it gets red hot. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's good and red hot now. So you waft it a few times, pick up the plate, stab it into the auger just to cool it off, and now you're ready to reach into the slant and grab a, a sample. And quickly close the slant. Drag the yeast down, and then back and forth. And what that will hopefully do is that will stretch the yeast out along the plate so that you'll, able, you'll be able to isolate individual colonies and thus ensure uh, a pure sample. So I've now flamed the loop again, allow it to cool, and that's it. And then I move on to my next yeast slant. And that is streaking yeast onto plates. It'll take a few days for these to grow. In fact, what we're going to do to uh, minimize contamination of these, now that we've completed streaking them, we're going to use a product called Parafilm. You could also just use um, Saran Wrap. But this is a product that's used in the laboratory. And we take a little section of this and just wrap it around the edges so that uh, you basically don't allow any airflow. Some would say that it's good to leave this open so that airflow uh, will be available for the yeast because obviously the yeast need oxygen to grow, but because we're dealing with such small samples, there's enough headspace, if you will, in this, in this um, plate to provide ample oxygen for the yeast.
So we're going to go ahead and close this off. And after, like I said, three or four days, you'll see yeast growth and hopefully see little circular colonies. So when this grows, we'll tune back in and show you what that looks like. It's been approximately three, maybe four days since we uh, initially streaked the yeast onto the plates. And there has been substantial growth. If you're able to see this, um, you'll see the two separate yeast strains. And the streaks are a bit heavy. I, uh, for fear of, of making sure that these were viable cultures, I streaked them a little heavy and uh, they are clearly viable. They're actually very healthy. Are you able to see those? Okay. Um, so this isn't an ideal streak, but it does show that um, with just a little bit of inoculum on the loop, you'll get uh, plenty of yeast growth. In fact, the second one that I streaked over here is even more substantial. This one is uh, going to be hard to, to extract a single uh, colony from, but nonetheless we're going to give it a go. So today we're going to take a single colony from each of these strains now that we know the first the yeast are viable and second that they're pure to put on a slant that we can then store more long term, say a year or, or more. This is an example of a, of a slant. I know we, I showed you this last time, but this one hasn't been streaked yet. And so what you can see is the auger is um, poured at an angle so that you have a very large surface area for which to streak out the yeast. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to streak these and again store them long term. So just like before, we will um, put everything in place before we actually open anything to make sure that we minimize the risk of contamination. Go ahead and crack this, set this over here. Okay, everything's in place. I'm ready to heat my loop. Okay, good and hot. Do the CL50 first. Stab it into the auger. Grab a single colony. And start from the bottom on these on the slants and streak upward. Okay. Flame the loop again. Was done. All we need to do now is put a little parafilm on the lid to keep it um, clean and also to label it. Don't forget to label them, otherwise you will <laughs> have problems knowing what you've got. Okay, and I'm just going to do the same thing for the next three. But that's the idea, and now we have a long-term storage. We'll leave this in room temperature for three to four days till the yeast grow, and then put it in refrigeration. Now that we've got all of our yeast cultures streaked out and yeast are viable, they're pure, they're ready to uh, be propagated. So in our next episode, we'll go through the propagation methods that I use anyway. And maybe, uh, depending on the, the, time, the length of the video, we might actually show how to culture yeast from a bottle and obtain a sample that way. That way you can get the, uh, the rare yeast strains that are perhaps not uh, available through the, uh, the yeast banks. And uh, we'll see how that goes. It's hit or miss, so we'll see how that goes, but we might we might include that in the next episode, so uh, tune back in. Thanks.